Home Assistant 2022.4 is out and I want to talk about my favorite features. The 2022.4 release of Home Assistant has some really cool features and I'm going to take you through my favorites. Let's start with Groups. Groups is now available in the UI. Of course, Group lets you put lots of entities into the same category or same grouping. Uh, and what you used to have to do is do that in YAML. And now I can do that in the UI directly. So if we go into Home Assistant, let's just take a quick look at that. If I navigate to Helpers, which is where it is now, by the way, it's under Helpers and there's a lot of new helpers added. I can go ahead and I can add a helper right over here. And that helper is going to be a group. And then I can choose from these different group categories. So let's say I wanna create a light group and I'll just call it all the lights. And then I can choose entities from here. Uh, the, this lamp, I can do some driveway lights. I can do those lights. I can do some of these lights here. And then I can submit all that. And now I have a new group that allows me to control all the lights with a single flick of the switch. That's how groups in the UI works. You used to have to put all that into YAML and then reload the group settings, but that's all, all now done for you automatically. One of my next favorite features is Switch as X. With Switch as X, it allows you to change the domain of an entity to something else that it actually does. So in Home Assistant's world, a wall plug is a switch. And while it's correct for a wall plug, um, they're often used with something else, such as a light, a fan, or something else. And you want to be able to change that. The release this time, 2022.4, includes Switch as X helper. That allows you to convert any Home Assistant switch into a light, cover, fan, lock, siren, or match to, to match your real, real world use better. So if we go back over to Home Assistant and I add another helper, change device type of a switch, and we'll change the switch to light in this case. And I will look for a uh, kitchen counter. See how it's a switch? I want it to be a light and now I submit that and finish. And now if I go into my developer tools and I search for light kitchen counter, now you see that it has become a light instead of the switch. So now anything that deals with lighting, such as your smart speakers or something else that specifically calls for a light in, in a, an entity selection, you can now set these as lights instead of making them switches. That's an awesome updated feature. There are a bunch more helpers that are available via the UI, such as derivative groups, integration, min max, threshold, times of day, and utility meter. And you can see all of those under the helpers. By adding a helper, these are all of the different ones. So there's a lot more helpers you can add to Home Assistant that weren't there before. Next up is update entities. Update entities allows you to tell if, if an update is available for your device or service. And in a lot of cases, you can install it dra directly from within Home Assistant. And the nice thing, as they point out here, is it shows up in your configuration dashboard, just like Home Assistant, Home Assistant OS, or an add-on update. And as a matter of fact, those now also have the update entities. So you can see that here in this little animation that you can update firmware, for example, in this particular device automatically. And more things are being added to this. So they'll continue to be, you'll continue to be able to see that you have updates available for all kinds of different devices. And if there is, it'll show up down here as a, a notification in your section. And you can also get information on the install version and the latest version right in the card here. Another cool thing that's added is adjusting the unit of measurement for sensors. If you have a sensor that doesn't have the correct measurement or you want to change one to something else different from, from everything else in your global settings, you can do that. Go under Home Assistant under the, the sensor itself and I'll just pick it from this list here under Developer Tools. Click on the settings here and then I can change the unit of measurement from Celsius to Fahrenheit or even Kelvin if you feel like you want to use that. So that's a really cool feature to allow you to change individual devices or entities to the unit of measurement that you want them to be. Another cool feature is adjusting long-term statistics. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I collect data and display it in various ways. And I always like my data to be accurate. Well, every once in a while, there's a problem with the data where you have a spike uh, or a dropout of the data, and then you get incorrect information. And you want it makes your graphs look kind of weird and, and yucky. So what you can do now is you can go in here and you can update 
adjusting the long-term statistics, and you can go and specifically call out a time where something is wrong and update that to something else. So let's take, for example, one of these sensors right here. If I click on this and I see that at 11.15 a.m., uh, there was a statistic that was incorrect. I can set this to some other value and adjust it, and then it will update that data directly in the database and keep those statistics from having those outliers. So I like having my data displayed properly and be proper, and this gives us a way to update that directly in Home Assistant. So amazing job there. There, there are so many more features that have been set up here, and, and uh, I, I can go through them all, but it would make the video very long. So I just want to bring up a couple of more things. The front end UI performance is uh, vastly improved. Instead of sending all changes to your dashboard every time something changes, it only changes or sends the relevant uh, changes. So everything else is static until a change is needed to be displayed on a dashboard or some other front end. That keeps all the data from coming over every time there's an update. Data you don't necessarily need because it hasn't changed any value. They've made improvements to make all of that uh, go away so that only necessary updates there, which would save you bandwidth on mobile connections and also speed up the upload or updating of dashboards because it's not sending packets of data that aren't necessary. Uh, new and updated selectors are used throughout Home Assistant, so that's new as well. You can add variables on triggers. And then here's some other noteworthy changes. Uh, Word Media Players uh, now work with the browser. So all of these are now available in the media browser. You can update the appearance of a binary sensor. You can select how it shows up. The material design icons have been updated and added to. Timers can now restore their state across restart. That's pretty amazing. If you restart Home Assistant and you have a timer running, that timer will continue to run even after Home Assistant has been restarted. And each timer has a, configura a configuration option to enable that, so you have to turn that on. It will not be enabled by default. Uh, TV integration for Samsung has been improved. Uh, there's now even Android 11 support for the Android TV. Uh, Hue Group support. Shelly cover devices have been supported for second generation Shelly devices and on and on and on more and more stuff here. New integrations have come into play. A bunch of these integrations now can be set up directly from within uh, the UI. And this is a, a nice one here. I've had to do all this by hand and now we can set up our Google calendars, which I display on a dashboard directly in the UI. Thanks, Alan. Uh, and a whole bunch of more stuff you can read there. As always, make sure you check your breaking changes. Uh, there are a lot of breaking changes that are in this release as well. So make sure if any of these apply to you, check these before you do the upgrade. Oh my gosh, don't ever upgrade without checking the or checking the breaking changes. And then we've lost a lot of stuff here and related to the GPIO uh, integration that went away uh, before. So if you're using GPIO, there are HACS uh, options for you to use GPIO uh, sensors within your devices. Okay, so that is a quick and dirty update for the Home Assistant release 2022.4. Let me know what your favorite uh, release or your favorite part of the release is, your favorite feature down in the comments below. Let me know if some of these are problems for you or you have issues with them. Uh, and if you have any other questions about anything, let me know down below in the comments. If you're not a channel subscriber, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. And if you're not a channel member, I would appreciate it if you would join the channel. It helps to support what I do here as well. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.